Today I'd like to look at a set theory version of a really classic result. So let's suppose we have any set x and then a function from the power set of x to the power set of x satisfying the following rule. So if a is a subset of b, then f of a is a subset of f of b. And given these conditions, there must exist a set C, which is a subset of X. In other words, it's in the power set of X, such that F of C equals C. So let's unravel what's going on here. So what's the power set? Well, the power set is the set of all subsets of a given set. So for example, if we have a three element set, there are zero element subsets. Well, there's only one, the empty set. There are three one element subsets, three two element subsets, and finally a single three element subset, the entire set. Okay, so that's us recalling what the power set is. Now let's look at this condition. This is like an increasing type condition on the set of subsets. So we can think about this containment as being some sort of ordering. So F maintains that ordering. And then this f of c equals c is like having a fixed point. So I'd like to point out that this is a special case of something called the Nastar-Tarski theorem, which has to do with complete lattices, which is a type of poset or partially ordered set. Maybe the most famous version of this theorem involves increasing functions from the interval 0, 1 into the interval 0, 1. And in fact, any increasing function from 0, 1 to 0, 1, it need not be continuous, has a fixed point. So I think it's kind of a nice game to try and beat this theorem. In other words, draw an increasing function from 0, 1 to 0, 1 that does not have a fixed point. And you'll see that it seems to be impossible. And it is by a result of that theorem. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up, I'd like to jump into our set theory version of that theorem. Okay, so we'll do that by considering the following subset of the power set. So this is going to be made up of subsets of X. So I'm going to call this capital Y, and this is all going to be all A, which are subsets of X. In other words, they're elements of the power set, such that A is contained in F of A. So like I said, this is pretty clearly a subset of the power set of X. Before we can get off the ground, we'd like to argue that Y is non-empty, and it is. So let's do that with the following observation. So notice that the empty set is most definitely a subset of any subset of X. So indeed, it's a subset of its image. So that tells us that the empty set is an element of Y. In other words, Y is non-empty. Okay, great. So since Y is non-empty, we can talk about taking the union of all of the elements from Y. So let's do that. So let's set C equal to the union of all A and Y of A. And I want to finish this whole thing off with the following claim, and that is F of C is equal to C. In other words, C is our fixed point in this setting. Okay, so we need to show two things in order to do this. So, and that's because we need double containment in order to prove that two sets are the same. So we first need to show that C is a subset of F of C. And then second, we need to show that F of C is a subset of C. So let's see if we can do both of those. And we'll start with this first one, that C is a subset of F of C. Okay, so how do we show that C is a subset of F of C? Well, we take an element from C and show that it must be in F of C. So let's take an element, I'll call it little x, which is in C. But by the definition of C, that means x is in A for some A in Y. But let's recall that by the definition of Y, we know that A is a subset of F of A. So that's the entry fee into being in Y. 
So we can combine this, the fact that A is a subset of F of A, with the fact that X is an element from A to tell us that X is an element from F of A. But now let's notice that we haven't used this increasing property yet, but we're about to. So let's also note that most definitely A is a subset of C because C is constructed out of all of these types of sets. But that means from our given that F of A is a subset of F of C by the increasing property again. But now we can put this together with this to tell us that X is indeed an element from F of C. But let's see what we have. We started with X is an element from C and ended with X is an element from F of C, but that's exactly what we need for C to be a subset of F of C. So we're done with this first containment. Okay, so let's clean this up and we will do the reverse containment. We're halfway to showing that this constructed set C was our fixed point. We showed that C was a subset of F of C. Now we'd like to show that F of C is a subset of C. So we'll actually start with this fact. So I'll just say that, let's start with C is a subset of F of C. And now let's apply F to both sides here. And notice that the containment will still be satisfied by our increasing condition. So let's write that down. That tells us that F of C is a subset of F of F of C. Again, that's by our increasing property over here. Now let's see what we have. If we think about this F of C as playing the role of A in this definition of Y up here, we see that F of C satisfies the entry fee to being inside of Y. So that means that F of C is an element from Y. But then let's recall that C is the union of all elements from Y. So indeed, F of C is a subset of C. So that finishes this reverse containment. And then these two containments put together is exactly what we need for F of C to be equal to C. And that's exactly what we wanted. And that's a good place to stop.